What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 WWE wrestlers who debuted as fans in the audience. The first person I can think of immediately, and I remember watching this live when it happened. Uh, I think uh, Raw was doing their like European tour or whatnot, and there was a person infamously known by Santino Morella in the crowd, and uh, I think he ended up facing. I'm not sure who it was exactly let me know down below but i think he ended up winning like the intercontinental championship or something like that it was something wild i believe let me know if i'm correct on that but i remember watching that live and i was like wow that's that's pretty pretty damn cool you know what i'm saying just seeing how this dude's in the crowd he ends up i think winning a championship match or the match he was in involved he ended up winning but then you know they went with the Santino thing and then he became a strictly comedy act. And a lot of this stuff was hilarious. And then the him entering in that women's battle royal, Santino, uh, like the female version of him, it just it, it got weird very quickly. So we're gonna check this out. Appreciate all love and support, man. I'm sure he's gonna be on this list at the top of the list because it only makes sense. So let's do this thing. Now there have been some wild and unique debuts throughout WWE history, but from time to time WWE likes to debut a brand new wrestler by disguising them as an actual fan. This approach traditionally works rather well as the fans instantly relate to the wrestler in question and over the years some of the most iconic names in WWE history have debuted in this exact same manner. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE wrestlers who debuted when at- When Ronda hopped that barricade I was like, oh this is something special. And then it kind of it became less special. But it was a cool original moment. Sure. Fans. Like once she hopped that barricade, people went crazy. I was a dope Be sure WrestleMania. To subscribe moment. and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and an on wrestling channel. Incredible. Number 10, Emma. In 2014, hmm. when WWE made plans to call NXT's Emma up to the main this. roster, they had a clear creative vision in mind. Emma would appear in the audience on both Raw and SmackDown, and gradually over a few weeks, the fans would begin to question Emma's motives and question why she was hanging around in the audience. Following her being planted in the audience for a number of weeks, Emma would officially become a member of the main roster when Santino Morella called her out of the audience for a dance-off. It, it's funny that Santino, of all people, would be doing that. <laughs> it was appreciated that WWE didn't retcon Emma's celebrated history in NXT, as it was mentioned both by Santino as well as the WWE commentary team that Emma was previously a key part of the black and gold brand. This That's was crazy. a clever way to call up a talent from NXT and pairing Emma with someone as popular. I remember that little dance was uh, it was it was pretty popular at the time. I didn't know how it originated, but just to see that they kept that going to kind of introduce her to the main roster was actually pretty cool. Santino was a smart initial move on behalf of WWE. Number nine, Steve Blackman. Of the lethal weapon Steve Blackman was one of the most underrated stars of the Attitude Era. Blackman's martial arts gimmick was way ahead of its time and fans had fond memories <laughs> of Blackman's work, especially in the hardcore division. <laughs> what is often forgotten about when it comes to Blackman is that he debuted as a fan back in 97. Wow. On the November 7th, 97 episode of Raw, Blackman would be sitting in the crowd and he would jump the guardrail to attack the Heart Foundation who were attacking Vader. He would be given instant credibility with his presentation and a substantial push would follow. Oh, damn. He would be a part of Team USA in the 97 that. Survivor Series in a featured match against Team Canada. Following this push, Blackman would have a number of notable feuds in the Attitude Era with the likes of Ken Shamrock and Shane McMahon. I remember. Yeah, he did. Whack him and Shane fell to his demise. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Number eight, Rosa Mendez. When Rosa Mendez took part in the 2006 Diva search, WWE believed that she had true potential, therefore they signed her to a WWE developmental deal. Fast forward to 2008 and they would decide to call up Mendez but to it's the main funny, roster. Santino's in a lot of these segments. <laughs> and they had an interesting storyline planned for her. She would pose as a fan, specifically a Beth Phoenix super fan. Their support of Phoenix would escalate when Mendez jumped the guardrail to attack Phoenix's arch rival Melina. 
WWE would then declare that Mendes was banned from all future WWE events, but she got around this by disguising herself as a member of Melina's paparazzi. <laughs> Phoenix would eventually hire Mendes in the storyline to be her and Santina Morella's intern, and this would ultimately be the highlight of a WWE run. She would transition into a manager for Primo and Epico in later years, whilst remaining active whenever WWE needed her. She had a decent run in the company that lasted over a decade, which was certainly a noteworthy achievement for the former oh, wow. Deeper Search star. Damn, I didn't even realize Number seven, that. Hillbilly Jim. Hillbilly the Jim? The debut of Hillbilly Jim was nothing like WWE had ever done before. He'd be seen in the front row of live events, and he'd be known to fans as simply Big Jim. Big Jim! He eventually would appear as a guest on Piper's Pit, and this would lead to Hulk Hogan training him to become a WWE superstar. In a series of vignettes, Hogan would be seen training Jim and even providing him with his first set of wrestling boots. This was a huge spotlight for Hillbilly Jim's persona, and to his credit, he managed to get over with the audience and wow. the fans loved what he offered. Although Jim never won a championship in WWE, he was a certified legend and would later be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2018. Number 6, Hillbilly Serena Jim. Deeb. In early 2010, nah, WWE would her. debut Serena Deem and their plan was for Serena to join CM Punk in a straight edge society. On the January 22nd, 2010 edition of SmackDown, she sat in the audience before she jumped over the guardrail in an attempt to get to Punk. Serena would scream, I need you, over and over. This was when Punk offered her a spot in the Cultess stable. Wow. In unique fashion, she would have her head shaved, which was just highlighted how dedicated and passionate Serena was about her role. Her initial WWE run ultimately came to an end after WWE ruled that she wasn't living the straight edge lifestyle in real life. Despite <laughs> the WWE run not being what she or fans expected, she would have a number of guest stints in WWE a number of years later before mm -hmm. becoming a permanent fixture of AEW's women's mm -hmm. division. Number 5. I remember her. I, I remember her. I was like, yo, she's... Hey man, kudos to her for legit cutting her hair off for a storyline. That shit was crazy. I do... Straight Edge Society, that was a that was a pretty cool little faction for the time period they had it. Hey, CM Punk may not get the respect he deserved, but he was doing some great stuff on SmackDown, man. If Earthquake, Earthquake, Earthquake had an insanely memorable WWE debut in the late 80s. On the November 11th, 1989 edition of Superstars, Dino Bravo would challenge the Ultimate Warrior to a strength test. Bravo, along with his manager Jimmy Hart, suggested that a member of the audience should be picked, and Bravo and Warrior would perform push-ups with a fan on their back. This was when the man who would be later known as the Earthquake would be Me? selected. <laughs> Earthquake informed the audience that his name was simply John, and when it was time for Earthquake to sit on the back of the Warrior, Earthquake would officially become the member of the roster when he used a seated senton on the Warrior. Earthquake would then perform several big oh. splashes on the incapacitated warrior, making fans instantly know that Earthquake was a devastating force in WWE. Earthquake. This was an ingenious way for them to debut a new star, and it worked wonders for Earthquake's connection with the audience. Number 4, Zach Gowan. I mean, the dude is humongous, so... Oh! Zach Gowan, man. I, we've, we've checked out a, a, a clip of his recently. On the end of Clutch page, man, I remember him uh, for getting F5'd into a goddamn pole <laughs> by fucking Brock. It was brutal. The WWE likes to experiment with their programming from time to time, and the in-ring debut of Zach Gowan was certainly an interesting storyline that transpired in 2003. Gowan would debut as a fan in May of the aforementioned year and would jump the barricade in order to help Hulk Hogan, aka Mr. America, who was being attacked by Roddy Piper and Sean O'Hare. Gowan had a prosthetic leg, so WWE naturally decided to incorporate this into his debut as Piper pulled off the prosthetic leg completely. He would be instantly thrown into the big time as during his uh -huh. first few months he would work with WWE legends such as Brock Lesnar, Kurt Angle and The Big Show. He would even wrestle the former WWE chairman Vince McMahon. So it was evident that WWE believed that Gowan would be a huge star for the company. Now his run in WWE though wouldn't last too long as he was released in 2004 for having backstage heat. Nevertheless, Gowan looks fondly back on his WWE run and appreciates the platform he was given at such an early age. Oh, for sure. Number three, Mickey James. Now this the I WWE definitely debut wasn't of expecting. Mickey James was executed to perfection. In October 2005, Trish Stratus would defeat Victoria on Raw, and following the match, she would attack Stratus only for an unknown woman to make the save. This unknown woman was Mickey James. Jim Ross and Jerry Lola sold this amazingly on commentary, as they had no idea who Mickey was, and Lola questioned if Mickey came from the crowd. She would be declared as a super fan of Trish, and this would be a storyline which would develop oh. over the next several months. Oh man! <laughs> 
<laughs> All you got to say is, if you guys remember that WrestleMania, oh, 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 with Trish. I think, yeah, it was. It was Trish and uh, Mickey James. Oh, boy. <laughs> The storyline between the two would be insanely compelling, and it was rare that WWE would devote this much time and effort into a women's storyline back in the Ruthless Aggression era. Yep. Mickey's admiration of Stratus eventually turned sinister, leading to an acclaimed matchup at WrestleMania Yo. 22. <laughs> and the initial debut was the perfect introduction of Mickey to the WWE audience, and she would end up being one of the most iconic female talents in WWE history. Number two, Beth Phoenix. Hmm, well, one I year think after I WWE this. hit a home run with the debut of Mickey James, they attempted a similar approach with the debut of future Hall of Famer Beth Phoenix. On the May 8th, 2006 edition of Raw, Phoenix would emerge from the crowd attacking Mickey. It was then explained that she and Mickey were old friends, but Phoenix was swearing revenge because Mickey had ruined her life. This debut is often forgotten about, mainly yeah. because Phoenix was taken off TV shortly after her initial debut. Oh. When she eventually returned in 2007, a rocket was strapped to her and oh, she yep. became the top star in the women's division, Facts. where she would be cemented for the next several years. And number one, Santino Marella. Got it. One it of the most iconic sense. debuts of the Ruthless Aggression Era was that of Santino Marella. Mm -hmm. Marella would debut on the April 16th, 2007 episode of Raw, which was emanating from Milan, Italy. Morella was present as a fan who was picked out of the crowd by Vince McMahon as an opponent for the villainous Umaga. Morella vs Umaga would be a match for the IC title and yep, following I'm, some interference from Bobby Lashley, he would win the title in one of the biggest upsets in WWE yep. history. It was a fantastic and memorable moment that still holds up over 15 years mm -hmm. later. Morella would go on to have a rather successful WWE career, winning the IC title on a number of occasions and taking part in some of the most hilarious comedic segments ever seen on WWE programming. But they have uh, Santino, I, there's, even though there's some stuff that they did with him, I found just mega cringe, especially the whole entering in a women's battle royal. That that to me was ultimate cringe. And I, I think he won the Women's Divas Championship at one point, correct me if I'm wrong, but Hey, I will say this. The dude was hilarious. His comedic timing was on point. I enjoyed his funny moments. I'm not going to lie. And that epic moment of him <laughs> beating Umaga and me watching that live and the crowd going crazy was pretty damn cool. So comment down below. Let me know. What's your favorite Santino moment of all time? I, we knew this was gonna be the no, he was gonna be the number one uh, person in this video. Um, so, what's your favorite Santino moment of all time? For me, it gotta be up there um, with uh, him getting eliminated in the Royal Rumble as the fastest uh, fastest elimination, and him getting. I'm saying I wasn't ready. I, I wasn't ready. That shit was all, that's always funny to me because he was. I wasn't ready. They there was. People in the front row had a Santino sign and him doing the little power walk. That that shit is funny to me. I ain't gonna lie to you. So comment down below. Let me know your favorite Santino Morella moment. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150k and I am still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.